Socks from her. <laughs> so <stupid>. America. <laughs> <laughs> So today we're meeting with uh, Dr. Alex Gonzalez, his wife Cindy, and we're going to be talking about their business, their company is Park. Now it's abbreviated. Um, he's going to tell me the abbreviation for the Park part portion of it, but uh, he's going to basically go over how we started, how you actually, uh, what you've been doing during the pandemic, and how you started this business from just a small little uh, idea that you had. Uh, back in the day so tell me a little bit about you know what how you got into it and uh, let's go from there and tell me the story sweet so um, basically you know we've known each other for a while yeah. so we grew up uh, kind of playing sports being active exercising and, and what sport did you play I played uh, high school basketball okay so okay. I played high school basketball but along with T we used to play flag football back yeah. in the day yeah, we, did. we did we did we used to tear it up that's yeah. about coming in yeah. so, uh, great, great hands, great hands. No, that's the moment, but whatever. I didn't say it, he did. But, but yeah, so like um, when I was playing high school basketball, I suffered an injury to my knee. It was right. nothing too crazy. I didn't need surgery or anything. So the way that the doctor wanted me to fix it was to do physical therapy. And when I did the therapy, I saw how cool the profession was, how it was very similar to what I really enjoyed, which was exercising and being active. And it was basically a step up from what I thought I wanted to do, was, which was personal training. This is when I was like 15 or 16 years old. Okay. Um, so you did, did you have this as a, a dream? Did you, what, what did you have before that? Like, you know, I dreamt of being a baseball player. Right, right. So my dream yeah. was always to be playing the major leagues. Right. Um, and I want to know, was that something that once you had that injury, you started saying, wow, that might be something that I might, uh, you know, I like, like right. to do for the rest of my life or, you know. Or, or That's exactly how it was. My dream was to, you know, play professional uh, basketball. Right. I fell uh, just a little bit short sure, of that. Sure. But, uh, but when I saw the profession, I saw how cool it was, how you get to help people. I mean, because that's what I, what kind of attracted me the most to the profession was that my PT worked with me literally hands on. Right. And that she was able to get me from, hey, I can't even sit down to watch a movie to being able to play basketball again, play sports again, work out again. So the fact that I was, that, that I saw that she helped me so directly, not like the doctor that just saw me real quick and said, all right, well, yeah. let me yeah. take an X-ray. Prescription, right. prescription, and the, prescription and the, or goal. Yeah. They referred me to the PT, which did more hands-on work. And that's when I kind of fell in love with the profession. And really since that day on or that time period on, I said, I want to be a PT. And so well, yeah, it just worked out like that, you know? Yeah. Um, now, tell me how you started. I know that you, everybody uh, has the story of, Oh, I started in a garage, or right, you know, right, right. I started. Yeah. I know you started in somebody's uh, place of business. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, and you know where you've grown to, uh, at, you know, where you're at now. Right. So, 2010, I graduated with my doctorate degree, um, and then I start working at an outpatient center, a small, privately owned, kind of family-run place, similar okay. to this. And I, I see that, you know. They were seeing a lot of, they had me seeing a lot of people per hour, like three or four people an hour. Right. And I was working 10 hour days. I was seeing like 20, 30 patients a day and I just felt like I was getting burnt out. So my, my uh, vision was never really to own a practice. I always thought I was just gonna work somewhere and like, you know, help people, you right. know, do my nine to five, do my 40 hours and be good. But, but then I started realizing that I wasn't really getting the type or being able to give the type of treatment that I wanted to, which was like, you know, focused on that patient, on that person, seeing what their limitations are, what their goals are, and helping them to you know, achieve it. Right. So based on that, that's what pushed me to start a practice. And I started, like you said, inside of a gym called Elite U okay. in Coconut Grove. It's yeah. still there to this day. Okay. Uh, real nice place, a real nice group of people. They gave me the opportunity to start the business there. And about a year after, I kind of outgrew the space, and I moved and I subleased the space. Uh, okay. with another therapist where we kind of shared he did three days I did three days and then little by little we went with that you exactly. through that and it was like we I was a one person business right, right. I was the one answering the phone I was the one scheduling people doing the treatments um, and I, park which stands for premier athletic rehab center Thank you. okay didn't really come to be what it is until 
my beautiful wife, <laughs> Cindy, uh, came into the picture, helped me bring her managerial skills right. to the business because she was working as a uh, property manager at a high-rise building, managing you know right. uh, 800 units. Right. So when we when we had our son. We spoke, and she was very. Um, it was a very demanding position, right? She was on call almost 24 hours. At two in the morning, she would get a phone call, and it wasn't really the type of, you know, atmosphere that we wanted, or the type of position that we wanted for our family. You know, we wanted her to be able to be a, a little more present, have more freedom, and not be a slave to the phone right. whenever they called. You know. Right. So you guys then. From that full salary that she had, you had a, you know, something stable. I had a sugar mama. I did, there I you know. go. I, I had love, a sugar mama. I love being a sugar mama. Right. And I love awesome. having a <laughs> But right. so when you so when that, but when you, now you got into that position that yes. now she's gonna make that jump to you. Now there's no more. Uh, I got a backup plan. It's either you know swim yeah. or die. Exactly. So yeah, you know, tell me how she's helped you because as you know, I had the same situation. Right. My wife. Right. Is my partner, mm -hmm. and you know it's really uh, something good that helps you, you know, lift up your business because nobody's gonna run your business like you and your wife. No, no, so yeah. tell me, you know, how you know she's motivated you right. to actually get to that next, uh, which you know, which this you know location is amazing. Most definitely, and and tell it me, wouldn't have happened without her for sure. But I think the main thing that she brought was just like you know her energy. Which is what I thought. <laughs> but you know, uh, people can tell that you know as soon as, and it starts from when people call. You know, when people call, she's the one that's usually answering the phone. Right. Sometimes I answer them too, but it's mainly her. And people can tell the sincerity you right. know, that she speaks to them with, and the way that she tries to see what's bothering them before even asking them, "Hey, what insurance do you have?" Like that's right. a typical experience that a client or a patient has when they call somewhere. First thing is, hey, what insurance do you have? You know, she's like, okay, we'll talk about that later, but tell me what's going on with you. So she brought, you know, her, her personal, positive energy, the personal, personal attention, the, the, the touch. And then she also brought her, obviously her managerial skills and her, her vision. She does, not only does she screen the calls and talk to people, she, she schedules them, she checks people's benefits, she does her marketing, so you, so, so you tell, so you, so so you tell me yeah. what you've done to help him out, because I know that sometimes guys aren't as, and I'm gonna, you know, as structured and yeah. not as detailed. Right, right. So he might not be as good in one position or the other. He's trying to be, you know, jack of all trades. Right. You come in uh, and you know you settle him down. Tell me mm -hmm. how you did that, you know. Yeah, I think the main thing was mostly structure, but more than anything because. He actually has structure, you know, and he is like, for a guy who's very uh, motivated and structured, but I think it was taken away from his profession. I mean, he is a doctor in physical therapy, he shouldn't be billing, he shouldn't be calling, he shouldn't be doing all that minutia that a manager should be doing because then it gets tedious and he can get tired of the job and he can also lose leads and time and patience. So I was just able to have him delegate all the office work to me, which is the next step in a business succeeding. You know, he was literally a one-man show. He was doing everything, and there's so much you can do when you're doing everything. So I think he was just spreading thin, and it just so happened that we found this location. I was about to give birth. We made a, you know, a difficult decision of leaving the stable insurance benefits, good salary, and just full focusing on making this our well, our family practice, and making it more successful and fulfilling our dream. Yeah. So I think it's just being, I was just, I let him be a doctor of physical therapy. I let, it, yeah. I let him be a therapist and I took over the office job. But, you know, basically I think that, that's, that's what happened. That's so impressive, you know, how you guys, you know, took a uh, salary and said, you know what, let's just, you know, hit this uh, full speed and, <laughs> yeah. and you know, and, and let, the, let the chips fall where they, where they fall, you know, yeah. so that, that's awesome. Um, now tell me what you've been doing uh, for the physical therapist or therapy that you've been doing online because right. obviously with COVID you can't you know see as many patients as you did before right. and there's restrictions and stuff like that so what have you done to, to make that transition? So initially when the pandemic first became a thing in March or mid-March we kind of sh uh, shut down shop for a little bit because you know we have a little one at home right. 
we didn't know the extent of what the really virus was, how it spread, how serious it was. So as a family, we made a decision to just kind of shut down shop. Um, I was still going to see patients at their house, the ones that were like fresh out of surgery, because right. I didn't want those people to just sit there right. and not get you know the services that they needed to, to recover. But what we did was we went virtually pretty quickly. This is what you use to, this is the TV that we use and what we do is that uh, we have uh, an Apple TV and so what I would do was... So you're streaming it directly to the Apple exactly. TV? To the Apple TV from the iPad and I'll wear Zoom. How, how, okay, so you're Zooming. Yeah, okay, I was cool. Zooming with, with clients. Good, good. And, and the, the web-based system that we use to do our documentation okay. integrated a virtual platform, but we had already done it before they did. Right. So okay. we're you're a little ahead of the curve. Yes. Okay. Because we knew that it, you know we weren't gonna totally be able to open up, so we were like, we gotta continue to try to offer the services to somebody. And thankfully, we were able to work with some people at the beginning to get them feeling better. And then once you know yeah. stuff calmed down a little bit, then we got them in. But right. I was surprised honestly because I didn't think that virtual therapy really. It would, right. would work. Wow. Honestly. But I was ple uh, pleasantly surprised, you know, people got better and, and they enjoyed it and they appreciated it a lot more than I thought they would. Wow. And um, so you're, you're, you're able now, does the insurance also now cover that? that you know, that's, that yeah. might be tricky. That's why yeah. I asked it if um, the insurance does cover They did. They did. Yeah? And, oh, that's and awesome. Usually most of the insurances base themselves off of Medicare and Medicare was pretty proactive. Wow. With uh, you know passing some legislation to help us be able to get reimbursed for the for the therapy. Good. So you've you've been able to you know turn that chapter and actually yeah. start you know making your business. I, I, what I want to do is the main reason that I want to interview you know successful people like yourselves are to show people that there are other options and other ways to stay alive during this pandemic right. and that it's not all oh I you know I'm losing my my job or losing everything and I and you know and there's no hope there is hope and you yeah. guys are the hope that's you why we created you right. have to adapt i think in every situation you have to adapt and i can tell you and you probably know also to shut down a business when we had made the move and both our income comes from one business yeah. for six weeks was very very scary yeah. but we just in that moment you have two choices you can either freak out and give up or you just have to kind of game plan and we sat together we did a virtual platform we yeah. put our wellness Ironically, we always wanted to do online stuff because we're yeah. like, oh, that's a feature, but we don't have time. Never had time. And, 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 so, and you're not even sure if it's going to work. Exactly. So. <laughs> and then we were forced, like, we look back and we had a couple breakdowns and it was very hard and sleepless nights mm -hmm. and we lost half our hair and have so many grades, <laughs> but it has ended up working its way out, but because we adapted and we worked and we were right. just like, you can have your bad days, but... And we have no choice. We have a son, right? You know, so he's our motivation. So yeah. I'm, that that I'm grateful for. I don't know if it would have been as if it was before we had you do anything. So we tend to always yeah, want but to. But you, you know, kids will they always motivate you to try to, to get push better. forward, yeah. right? Because at least I've noticed in my lifetime that when you do things for yourself, you give some effort. But when you're doing something for something that you feel is like greater than yourself. You, that's when you really unlock your like maximum potential. Like for example, a team sport, right? right. Even with like football, if you go out trying to make a million catches, right. Right. you're not gonna do as well as if you buy into the team right. and you play together. Right. And, you know, it's just the same thing goes for the family. And he's a yeah. motivating factor for us. And he pushed us to not only do like the PT virtually, but we also said, why don't we try to also offer other services virtually too. So, so, like, so tell me what else you're offering. So we had a uh, run club that we did every Monday. We've been right. doing it for that, the last three or four years. Right. I know you've been doing that run club and I yeah. wanted to ask you on that too. Just, um, you know, I know that you post that you're, that you're meeting for the run club. Right. Um, who's involved in that? Do you, do, you, um, do you like team up with some people and do collaborations or we, how Yeah, does that we work? had been actually right before <laughs> <laughs> right before the pandemic hit, we had just, uh, you know, done a one-year agreement with a local run uh, club. Oh, nice. We Run. I believe so. It's called We Run Miami. I'm sorry if I messed that up. I love you guys. But um, we had just started that we were going to meet up once a month and do the run club together. 
when it hit, obviously nobody wants to meet up still, right. and they're kind of hesitant to meet up still to this day. So right. I said, yo, we've been running every Monday. I don't want to stop. How can we continue to do this? So we had a couple options. Either we would do a little warm up together and tell everybody, hey, go run, and then we'll meet back for a cool down, which I felt was like, yeah. Not really people personal. in the process also because right. you have to like log exactly. off because you're not going to like run oh. with them. Right. You know? So what we did was so. we, we decided to do Run Club virtually every Monday still starting at 6.30. We lead a 15 minute warm up, a dynamic warm up. And then rather than running for distance, the 5K that we used to do, huh. now we're doing sprints. Yeah. Which with we time. did. So it's easier because yeah. you always see us on the camera. Right. Oh, we that's did cool. It. Yeah. That's which we, we were doing that once a month. We would meet up at a track and we would do sprints, 100 meter sprints. Right. Uh, so what we did was just like, all right, what can we do to kind of stay relevant and keep the people engaged with us still? And also us be accountable to ourselves to run, right. is do the run club. So every we still do it. Once in a blue moon, we'll miss, but, right. no, but, but we still good. do it. Sprints and core. Good, you know, good. So we sprint, we walk back. Do now, is that a service that you give for free? That's all free. Or, yeah. right. So you're yeah. just giving back, you know, to to your to your people, to exactly. your community. Yeah, and, uh, and we wanna, you know, we wanted to give people some structure still, you know, even if it's as silly as a run club, you know, but something that you can. Yeah, it's still, not silly. It's, it's right. something <laughs> that people really need to do. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you just have to. What's great is that you're doing that. Without charging anybody, you're right. showing them how to stretch, how to do things that they might not have had the opportunity of doing. So it's a, you know, it's a great thing you're doing. Yeah, and we so we not only do the run club on Mondays, we do yoga on also on IG Live on Tuesdays. For and, and, and we we're not charging anything. We have an instructor come in, which we still pay. Okay. Because yeah. she's amazing, Rosie of Nimbody Studios. Oh, nice. she's, she's awesome. But you know, we didn't want to stop doing yoga ourselves. Right. And then we also wanted to give it's people the opportunity yeah. to do yoga because yeah, it's really good. if you do yoga, you know, you know, the psychological effects that it has, how it sends you out, calms you down, it helps you connect your body, your mind, your breath and all that. So right. in a time like this, I think yoga is super important. And yeah. honestly, we wanted to keep doing it ourselves. Yeah, we wanted to give our community one hour where they didn't have to think about the pandemic. And so we kind of moved our wellness online and gave it to the public kind of, you know, for free, right? for free, just because that's what we need to do in hard times. Right, right. And anything else they can cost or they can come or there's additional, but we just wanted to offer that. And then we also, one more thing about the adapting is that when we did a virtual platform and we had to adapt to the pandemic, we are like, okay, everyone is at home now. So we made up or we started the virtual ergonomic assessment. So everyone's right. now working from home on their desk, their back is hurting, their mm, neck is hurting. Okay. And so we would do a, go on mind body and do a $50 virtual assessment. And so that we adapted to also, you know, which is therapy, but it's not something we would do before because people would come for like their knee or surgery. Right. They wouldn't come here to do a virtual assessment, which right. is key. Or now. ergonomic assessment. Ergonomic assessment, right. yeah. yeah. Which is key because everyone's working from home. And, so and they don't so have you've been setup. seeing a lot of people uh, use that service then. Yeah, we yeah. not only have we seen people use that service, but we also They're seeking it. They just don't realize people it. that really need it. Like yeah. we opened back up uh, mid-April, so we took six weeks off. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry, early May, because we, we, we stopped right. mid-March. Uh, six weeks later, we opened back up and we got an influx of people coming in because their back was hurting, their shoulder blades, their neck was hurting. Right. And, just from the typing and, and I would just we would just ask them okay so what's changed oh I'm working from home all right where are you working oh I'm working on my kitchen counter wow I'm working on my I'm, yeah. on my table on my dining room table right on a regular wooden chair yeah. that doesn't have any back support you know wow and when you're like you know focused on work and trying to adapt and do the same thing that we're trying to do right but at home you know with their job the last thing people think about is their ergonomics wow you know so we we kind of went online we did a uh, IG Live, I think it was, or uh, IGTV, kind of explaining and showing people, look, this is how you should align yourself. This is the ideal position. And then we also told people, if you want to take it a step further and we, you want us to kind of take a look at your setup, we set up a half an hour call with them. We had them sit down, somebody in their family kind of hold oh, the phone so nice. that they can show us how they're working, give them some detailed feedback and then we would send them that information like on an email or whatnot. But, wow, that's, that's but awesome. it was pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Now, 
wanted to ask you, um, what's this thing um, that I saw on your Instagram? It was PT first. Tell me oh, something yeah. about that. Like, yeah. Explain, yeah. explain, yeah. explain, yeah. explain yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, so PT first is a movement that um, was started by the American Physical Therapy Association. Okay. And basically what we're pushing for is for people to come to PT, physical therapy, yeah. first before they try to take any medications or get injections. Is it covered? Is it, is it covered uh, under insurance? Do they yes. do they need a referral? What People don't that? need a referral in Florida. So you have 30 days to okay. see a physical therapist before you need a prescription. And usually within 30 days, people are better significantly if therapy is going to work for them. Right. Well, and that's then, good to know because that a lot of people, me uh, as just a regular consumer, right. I really don't know that was part of it. So, exactly. you know, it's, it's something that I wanted to bring out because it's really helpful for somebody to know, wow, I don't have to get a referral. I right. could just, you know, go straight, you know, to the to physical therapist exactly. and figure out, you know, fix me, you know, exactly. and, and that's, stay that's away from the medicines right. and all that. Yeah. And the, and the x-rays and the MRIs and, and the doctor visits, right. you know, if you, most of the time people will go to like their primary care doctor and your primary care doctor really is like interested more in your blood pressure, your labs, right. and that type of uh, component of your health. They don't really know too much about your physical right. musculoskeletal system, you know, and how it works and right. how to treat it. So they do what they know, which is not a, it's not a knock on them in any way, shape, or form. They do what they know. They are, you know, seeing you, seeing that you may have some inflammation, so they're going to give you an anti-inflammatory. Right. But is that going to fix the no cause of that inflammation? Not really. You maybe feel a little bit better, go back to working out or throwing the football, then it gets even worse when it flares up again, and then you end up getting an MRI or an X-ray, and then then maybe two or three months down the line, they send you to PT. Okay. So choose PT first is just a movement where the Physical Therapy Association is trying to educate the general general public that they have the right to come see us first. That's and cool. that they should because really, we can see what's going on with you and if it's, with, if it's not within our scope, then you know we will refer you to somebody and a trusted you know, source, somebody that we know is good, somebody that we know will be a specialist in what your right. what your condition is. Okay. So that's what, what the Choose PT okay. first is. I thought it was really something that uh, yes. they need to tell people about. Most definitely. They don't know. They people don't, don't know. know. And, and that's what we're trying to change. Good. The, new, the new generation of PT is trying to change that and to educate the people and to let them know they have the right to do that, you know? Okay. Because um, it's relatively new, you know, the direct access. Um, let, let Let's talk a little bit about mindset. Uh, I know you guys, uh, you listen to Bob Proctor, yeah. you guys do some of uh, motivational stuff, yeah. you guys um, uh, meditate, you do yoga. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how, how that has helped you in your business and how it's become you know, part of, of you making you know, your, your you know, progression on, right. uh, on life. You're way better at this. <laughs> so we, we both we both are into that you know mindfulness and mm -hmm. meditation, but uh, for me, it's it's helped me in general just to like center myself to become more like uh, mindful of my thoughts and you know what I'm putting my focus and my attention on, mm -hmm. and that carries over into everything, right? It could go into your professional, your personal life, but. Right. For me, it's just it's helped me to to center myself, to to kind of control the, the talk and what I tell myself or what I allow myself to listen to. Right. Um, so I I have been you know meditating now for like three or four years, and it's helped me so much that I feel like I have to like kind of share it, you know. Right. And and. I kind of felt the urge or whatever to start sharing that, so I started doing like live meditations, like two or three times a week. Right. And um, for me, it's just helped me all around, man. Like, 
I don't know, I guess she can kind of vouch to yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's always been yeah. awesome. But I think um, as you grow, your priorities shift. Or not that they shift, but, you know, when you're in your 20s, you don't have as many responsibilities as when you're in your 30s and have right. a family. Right. And meditation or mindfulness, because he does more meditation than I do, but your mindset in life is key to everything. everything yeah. It's key to us surviving this year, you know? Right. And I think in this world now where there's so much social media and you're comparing yourself to everyone, like people only see the successes. Like they don't know, they're like, oh my God, Park is doing so great. Oh my God, they survived this pandemic. But that took a lot of work, a lot of struggle. Lot that of took us night. a lot of sleepless <laughs> night, a lot of us like shaking off all the negativity and saying, okay, what do we need to do to improve? We can right. either like wallow in everything that's going on, which we have in some days, but we're good at like snapping each other off. Like I can right. be sad a couple of days and he's like, all right, let's go. And then we feed off each other. Luckily right. we haven't been sad at the same time, <laughs> but it, it, it has been hard this year because yeah. I'm a really happy person and this year I'd be like, ah, it's been rough. <laughs> She's done that a couple but um, <laughs> I think it's in, uh, important to, uh, you choose your happiness and you choose your success. Right. right. So you have two options. You either do nothing, complain, wallow, become the victim. And I don't mean that in a mean or condescending way. It's just that's really the two options you have. Sure. Or you shake it off and you figure out how to make things better. Right. And I think that's what meditation and mindfulness is, is just taking away the chatter, going within yourself, not comparing yourself to other businesses or other yeah, PTs or other relationships or other friends. And you know, not like, see what other people are doing because I think Just that focus I'll... on the energy that you want exactly it's just like clear your mind bro it's not that serious and me personally like i find that if i don't like be proactive or if i'm not proactive with uh what i'm taking in information that i'm taking in then i'll kind of revert back to my like negative self-talk which i don't think it's only me i think humans in general right. are like that you know like we're kind of pessimist in, in a sense like we'll see like most people are going to see the cup half empty right and it's the few that see the cup half full that have the uh, emotions and energy to carry forward even in a tough situation so for me that's what it's done basically and, and i just wanted to to share that with people i felt whatever the calling or whatever you want to call it no, to do that it's good to know it's good yeah. to know i and it's uh good to see people that are doing that that you know right. you know real people not just Oh, I went on YouTube and I have this guy that's super famous talking to you about, you know, all these things. When you start seeing it in action, you do see the, the result. I do meditate as well. And, um, and I, every day I listen to a motivational speaker. Every day I, I'm, I'm listening to an audio book. Yeah, I'm exactly. always getting knowledge in my head. Sure. I've, I've tried not to uh, watch any news. I don't sure, exactly. anything, anything, neg anything yeah, negative. Yes. If you're doing anything negative, talking negative, I either tell them I don't want to hear it or I just walk away. Right. So I've no, I, I, to me, it's really helped me grow. Right. And I see it's done the same thing to you guys, exactly. but it's good to see other people that are doing the same thing. Right. You know, because sometimes you just, you're online seeing all these things and you don't you don't think that it's real exactly but you know it is real it's real so you know that's what it, it's and and I'll, and it's more true for guys than for for women like women i feel are a little more receptive to that like whole mm -hmm. idea or concept or whatever for guys it's a little because yeah, you get it, you're, like, oh, it is, yeah. that's bullshit. Yeah, your ego oh. starts getting involved yeah, exactly and, exactly yeah. and con you know it helps to quiet your ego a little bit right. you of know? course a lot of times the limits, you know? Yeah. This is the whole section you have. You could you could have a, a full body workout here for if sure. you wanted to. Exactly. So I had mentioned before that before I was a physical therapist, I was doing personal training. Okay. I used to train younger, you know, kids and, and, and athletes. I used to train people that just wanted to get into better shape. So that was my foundation for, for my for my career, really. So right. I never wanted to exclude that or eliminate it. So, so I you, wanted you know to know a little bit about then, you know, what um, what the CrossFitters do, exactly. what the bodybuilders do, exactly. what the yoga person does, so exactly. you know how to treat those injuries exactly. because and I've done a little done. bit about of right. everything. Honestly, right. I've done yoga. I used to, you know, do like yeah. more bodybuilding exercise. Yeah, did CrossFit for a little bit, so I think that uh, you know we're able to identify what's going on, and she also does the same thing. Right. So, and personally, really, 
I wanted to create a space that I can work out in myself. Like I didn't want your typical physical therapy place that has the little pink dumbbells that go up to eight pounds. Right. I wanted to have a place where a person that does CrossFit can come in and be like, oh man, I can't do this lift with 150 pounds. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna build you to it. Before right. you leave, I want you to do that lift here with 150 pounds right. to make sure that you can do yeah, it. Because you have a full squat rack, yeah, you, have, you have, exactly. you know, you got a bunch of weight. We got all the toys, we have all the barbell equipment, we have the bench so you can do your traditional bench yeah. and incline, it's fully adjustable. We have the kettlebells, we have the steel maces, the dumbbells. Ideally what our vision is and also what happens is we have our physical therapy clients come and as at the beginning it's more physical therapy, more manual right. ther uh, therapy kind of towards the end. He always includes some sort of strengthening and working out because it's, you know, you right. need to be able to do that. And that's our ideal client. Exactly. People that enjoy exercising and working out but can't do it because they're limited. Right. Exactly. And then once they finish the, you know, the the 12 sessions, whatever, it's a little bit different for everyone. They stay coming once a month as a wellness member. So you feel better now, you know, come once a month and we'll do like a, a checkup, we'll do some recovery. If you want to work out, you can work out. And our clients love that. They can come in and they can just work out in the meantime if they're waiting for something, right. even though cool. you really don't wait here. But <laughs> if, let's say, you know, they become like family. So if they're stretching a foam rolling, they'll be like, can I please work out? And like, of course, go yeah. ahead. This is your gym, awesome. you know? Awesome. Which leads me the segues into the into the the component that we're trying to now really push which is the wellness okay like we don't only want to be thought of as a place that you go to when you're injured or when you're in pain we want people to know that they can come here so that they can feel as healthy as possible while they're training and so prevent we prevent injury and prevent injury so like really. prehab not only rehab exactly right. right but like for for example we have a couple of competitive like bodybuilders physique bodybuilders right. that they're pushing their body to the limit right and you know they ha they came here because one of them came because they tore their pec oh wow right and so we rehab them to the point that now thankfully he just won first place wow in in his competition That's recently amazing. shout out to roger <laughs> uh, but but uh now he comes periodically just to loosen himself up because what he didn't realize was that when you're bodybuilding or when you're exercising your muscles get so tight that they're more likely to pop. So who's, a, who's a, what's his name, Roger or what? Uh, Roger Alfonso. All right, because we would want to, you know, put them in there. Oh yeah, do, for sure. You know, that, yeah. that way we could show that, you know, there there are people that you're helping that have major injuries. So that's yeah. a major injury. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we deal and for with them to get back right. to normal or you Plus, know being get, yeah and better. So right. that's something that that's impressive. So you know that, that's what we want to see is you showing what you do and you know that's great to, to have that on yeah there. yeah so that is really what we're we're continuing to push so that we can almost re-identify ourselves you know right um and what we can provide for people because when you think of physical therapy you think of injuries but it doesn't only have to be that like th there are many places that you can go to and just do a full recovery session like hey the first of the so, month so tell me why T tell me why they can't do the full recovery and why you're different from that. So most places are stuck in the traditional physical therapy um, mindset, mindset or, or structure uh -huh. where they're seeing three, four patients an hour and these people are coming in with an injury so you literally don't have time. So to do there, there is more of a cookie cutter, Cook, uh, exactly. you know, bring them in, take them out, exactly. and let's just, you know, bring see in them, as many as we can. See them 10 to 12 times, see them three times a week right. for four and weeks. And, and what gone. you're saying is that you are doing more of a personal touch, exactly. and you're really bringing, you know, the therapy to where it really needs to be, exactly. is that one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, dedication to that one person, because exactly. every person is different, as you've said. And not only... You know, if your neck is hurting, not only treating you until your neck stops hurting, but treating you until the point that you're like, yo, I'm back to working out. Right. I'm back to pressing 100 pounds over my head and my shoulder and my neck don't hurt anymore. And that's a big difference. So that's like post-rehabilitative care, which okay. a lot of people used to refer out to like a gym or something. You know, right. and we want to be the place that people think of when they're like, yo, not only am I injured, but I want to 
prevent myself from getting injured. Oh, I just want to feel good. Right. Honestly. Right. You know, muscles get tight and most people don't stretch as much as they should. Let me, so we want to be the people that are making you right. or giving you the accountability really to remember, oh, yeah, I got to stretch. And how did I remember? Because I went to go see Alex this month and he told me that my hamstrings are still kind of tight. Mm -hmm. Let me remember. And I give them a, a little, a little packet of like four or five exercises via email okay. where they can follow along and every month it kind of changes to what they're feeling or, or what their limitations are, you know? What are you doing with, uh, with the, the youth? I see that you did some type of program for the little oh, kids, yeah. Yeah. how to strengthen their muscles yeah. with bands and restriction. How do, what are you doing for that? And then, you know, how does that work if somebody has a kid that wants to bring them into your facility? Right, so that was kind of Cindy's baby, and I just kind of <laughs> piggybacked off of it, so. So we did something called the Young Athlete Development Program. Okay. We had launched it or put together in, in summer, so it was called SMART, summer, whatever, right. I explained it there, yeah. yeah. But the, the first thought behind it was when COVID happened and all the schools had stopped, we had- And the uh, schools, and the and team sports, sports. Exactly, right. we have a lot of, we had a lot of like high school, middle school um, athletes. athletes that come here. Yeah. And we were thinking about like, that's crazy that they can't do any sports and you they know, this is a time and we have a lot of athletes that are going to college because of that, of that sport. So stopping those sports, is a big deal, right. you know, because that's what they're going to college for. So we, I told them, I was like, why don't you put together a program? It's not necessarily sports specific, right. but on the contrary, it's a fundamental. So proper alignment, strength, proper form, because if you are working well, if your agility is good, if your strength is good, if your balance is good, if your fundamentals are good, you're going to be a good athlete. You're going to be, you're going to excel and as an athlete. And your movements and exactly. your movement patterns are good. Like right. the, the fundamental movements, like what we talked about, like, a hinge, you know, or a squat. Right. Like yeah, it, yeah. It, Te technique is technique the whole is thing. And form. So, and yeah. it carries form. over. Right. So what we did was that we followed the fundamental developmental pattern of how people learn how to move, right? So okay. you first learn when you're a baby. You're, you're right. going through this right yeah. now, right? Of course. You see that your son was able to uh, roll over. Okay. Do some, get on his tummy. Mm -hmm. Able to prop himself up on his elbows. Then right. he started crawling. Eventually he'll start walking yeah. and then going into running right so what we did was we addressed the imbalances and the asymmetries that people get when they develop because that's really where you start learning how to move right right, right. is when you develop some people develop better than others right that's why some athletes you get to see them when they run some kids you know yeah, you know yeah, what i'm talking about right they're course. just smoother right. more coordinated and then some are not so what we wanted to do was give the parents uh, the opportunity to have their kids go through this program so that they can learn how to move more symmetrically and more powerfully, and right? We did it and more online. in line. Yeah. But the, and, okay, so all online. Was, yeah, it was we all filmed online. six weeks of this yeah. program that they put together that was phenomenal, and then we filmed it all. We put it together and we launched it, and it included, um, like I said, agility, mobility, strength, and we also used those neuromuscular. Yeah, we yeah, use the bands, which which is pretty cool. Let me actually yeah. Yeah. let me use this opportunity to show you guys what the bands do. So the way that they work, right, is that they provide a compression to the body, right? Okay. And when you compress a joint, you activate the muscles around it. So for example, if you're on your arms, right, right, and you're in the top of a push-up you'll notice that you don't even have to try and your muscles will activate, right? Right. So this does the same thing, but uh, throughout the body, oh, all wow. together. Put so the, there's a couple, yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Okay. So cool. you, you could just kind of stand there, right? And we, we see the way that T is standing, we see the position that his shoulders are in, right? And then if we put this on, so we usually put it on his foot, so he'll step on it, boom. And he'll step on it here, good. And then he'll put the knot in between his legs, so boom. Side, yeah. And then we'll put his arm through this little strap and arm through this little strap. And you can automatically see yeah, you're, you're, what it does to you, right? Bringing you down the whole time. That's and so because of the because of the fact that the band is bringing you down, you're automatically going to stand yeah. taller, bro. You see how yeah. it, it yeah, does yeah. that for you? So like, let's say you have a kid that's stands like this they don't even notice it they stand like this yeah you put them on this and you make like, them aware of it yeah this band makes them aware and it makes them push off because yeah, sometimes you i even feel myself exactly doing right. this and and, and it's like because the band is exaggerating that 
because of its compressing all your joints, it activates the muscles around yeah. all the joints basically. And it also follows the, the lines of fascia, which that's something that we can talk about for an hour. Day. <laughs> but when you have these bands awesome. on, now you'll have somebody perform a squat. Because now, let's say you have somebody that usually squats like this. When, they, when you tell them to squat, they go, and they bring their chest down like this. If they have this band on and they do that, they're gonna do this because the band oh. is gonna bring them down, you see? Yeah. So it makes you stand straight. Oh. It makes you move straighter. It activates the muscles of the body okay. while you move. Cool. So there's different yeah, alignments and of... ways that you can do it. Like you can do just one leg at a time. So if I'm having you do a single, a reverse so this lunge. this is what you're using, this, you use this for that training. Yeah, yes. so that's used in a program and like you're saying, there's different, that's just the basic one. That's the there's one was just wrapped around or whatever. It's a bunch of different so the forms. So the way it addresses exactly. the asymmetries is like, if you have somebody do like a single leg, for example, you want them to hinge and do a single leg uh, hinge and they, you see that they're doing like this right. here or that when they go to do it, their leg does this. It goes in right. automatically, so I would I would have those kids wrap their oh. leg. It would make their leg do this even more, so that when they go to do it automatically, like we talked about before, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll do that and they'll auto correct it. And that oh. that not only makes you move more powerfully, but it prevents injuries. You know, because a lot of the, the young athletes they don't really know how to move properly, right. and they go to do a cut and their knees like this. That's how they hurt their knee. Especially on non-contact sports. Yeah, that's cool. So it's an online I'm going to take this thing yeah. home. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there you guys. See? He uses that's that it. and he starts with that and slowly he continues using that throughout the program but then adds band, then adds weight. So exactly. it's just like progressive because it's a, it's a training program put together by doctors of physical therapy. So there is a little more knowledge and right. mindfulness behind the movement. And so the week six, details. they're doing plyometrics right. and they're doing weights, but they don't oh. do that until weights the first week. Weights with this week. on. Exactly. I'm sorry, um, with plyometrics the with this on. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, plyometrics is hard already. As it is, <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> exactly. It challenges you, yeah, but at the same is. time, it kind of helps you. Yeah. yeah. No, and I, then, and then what we do is then you do the movements without anything on. Right. Uh, right. You do those same yeah, movements. Yeah. Man, you're gonna feel like super, you know, quick. Exactly. And and. It's something that we kind of both wish that we would have had as young athletes because, so you, you know, when we would practice, it was just like, yo, go do the drills. They wouldn't really yeah, I mean, address things, that. I right? mean, I think that our athletes nowadays are a lot better just because the technology is a lot better too. And the techniques. Yeah, the technique. The and you, could get some, the, you could get a baseball player and, you know, the, you're seeing his swing and doing that slow motion with a regular iPhone yeah. camera. Right. And you're able to fix the kids, you know, exactly. hitting habits, right? Because you can show them. Right. Yeah. It's like now before you had a camcorder or whatever, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. and it, did, it didn't go slow motion. And if it did, it was like them, <laughs> it really starts. And the way that you do it, it starts is by making them aware. Right. You know, yeah. you make them aware. Hey, do you know that you're doing this? Right. You know that you're so sitting like this, or they, they don't know. They have no idea. Right. And you show them, they become aware of it, and, and now they, they can correct it. Yeah. Exactly. I feel better already than yeah. using this thing. I'm telling you, we also <laughs> use this, by the way, for our regular treatments. Oh, yeah. no, like we use this for people. Like for example, that same patient that couldn't really touch their toes and couldn't twist, I would wrap the band around them a way that I would resist them twisting that way, mm, which right. would encourage their muscles to activate right. to help push them that way. No, that's, you know? that's awesome. So it's, awesome. it's pretty cool. Man. All right. I yeah. love what you're doing, you know, and all the all the good things you're doing and all the you're giving back to the community which is amazing so you know I, that's why i wanted to the you know interview you guys because you, you guys are inspirational you know and i, I just want to show people that you guys are here and you guys are doing awesome and how you've innovated and everybody can do that right you know so if you did it anybody else could do it yeah 100%. you know and but it all started because we wanted to help people. Right. Yeah. Like I became a PT because I've always liked to help people because I care about, you know, people feeling well. I care about people living happy. Yeah. And if you're living in pain and you can't really be active, yeah. you can't do the things that you love to do. And it doesn't you don't have to be an athlete. You could right. be a dad. Right. A dad in his early fifties, mid fifties, who his kid is ten, fifteen years old and he can't go shoot a basketball with his son because his knee hurts too much and and it swells up, you know? 
that's our core mission really is to help people to live happier healthier lives and that's what we focus on and everything else kind of like yeah, just works uh, itself out, you know you know it's um it's a saying i don't know i've always heard it and i believe it that you know you could give something to somebody and you always god pays you back tenfold yeah, 100%. so you know you guys are giving back and i could see it's coming back tenfold for you guys you know, okay. and you guys are doing amazing with your online presence now. <laughs> and you. now you're going to start your YouTube channel and actually <laughs> put things on there. Right. And you'll see you guys are going to, you know, get to that, you know, to that top level that, you know, we're not going to be able to see you because you're going to be way up there. No, you know? We'll remember the little people. Don't worry. <laughs> I appreciate that you're doing this just because I think um, nowadays people are just... Uh, in a moment where they're just they very stressed, yeah, they're like they're they're kind of volatile and they're just like angry, right. you know. And I think, um, like you said, we made the space for us too. And I think as when you have a kid, you learn that you lead by action, not by right. what you say. So we try and be good people to show people that they should be good people too. And like Amanda said, she was saying like, if you want something, just give it. So if you right. want love, give love. If right. you want to help someone, help someone else. Right. If you want money, then, you know, like, give it also. So I think right. I appreciate sure. that in this time where all you see is news and social media and negativity, we've, I feel like we've gotten lost in that. Yeah. So to focus on positivity and on hard work, because you have to work hard, right. I appreciate that a lot, because I think that that message is being lost in the craziness of this year. So, <laughs> so, so the, um, to, to recap the whole thing, or, you know, to give somebody, um, what, what, what's the word I'm trying to use? Um, what could you give, you know, what advice can you give to a young entrepreneur that's, you know, struggling right now? Right. What advice can you give them to that could help them in their business? Right. You know, I would, I would say that the best advice that you can give or that I can give is to honestly just try to identify who your ideal client is, see what that ideal client is lacking, and just try to show them how you can help them or just really focus on how you can serve them. Bro, so, really. Because when you start, like you've been doing, doing the Proctors and the yeah, yeah. Robins and all these right. guys, if you notice what their message always is, is to serve, bro, you yeah. know? And, and it's what I was trying to say earlier, that we just want to help people to live happy, healthy, active lives. And that's what we focus on. And then everything else kind of has a way of like working itself out, bro, honestly, you know? Yeah. I don't really know, you know, the numbers and the crunching the numbers. That's not my thing. That's more her thing. Yeah. You, you don't need the numbers. <laughs> right. it, it's exactly. like, it's not, a, it, it's like you said, it's all about, you know, you're you giving out and then it comes back to you. It comes back to you. And, and, and people and, feel that authenticity and that genuine, when you show people that you genuinely care about them and that you really want to help them, they have a way of kind of sticking around. They, right. they feel it. And that's, and why that's what's been patient. lost. We have right. the best clients because like you said that, you know, you kind of protect your energy or, or if you don't agree with how someone is living their life like mentally, it's not that you have anything against them, but it's not going to allow you to grow. So, you know, I wish you the best, but I'm just going to step over here right. because for me, I need to meditate, for me, I need to concentrate on this, et cetera, et cetera. So, you, it's crazy that you feel it because we have the best patients. Like we have the yeah, best patients. Them. We really are. And it may be that we attract them. Yeah. I don't, I'm not I, sure. I, but I, I, I think you are. I, I think, think you so, are. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's just crazy how things evolve, and you know, the universe gives back, and God gives back, and you know, I'm glad that, that He's giving back to you guys. Thank and um, one more thing I want to ask you about the final thing. Now, what do you guys do? for a parent that just had a kid, you know, and it's really learning the ropes. And I know you guys are learning still <laughs> the ropes, yeah, yeah, you know, because yeah. every time it's a different challenge, right. uh, but you guys are business owners. What, what, what advice do you give a business owner like myself that has a wife that's a partner and now has a newborn, you know, how do we delegate or, or manage our business with, you know the, the new little guy that's you know in, involved what do you what would you guys uh, say 
<laughs> uh, I think what I would say honestly, and it comes with the meditation and everything, is you have to completely let your ego go. Being a great mom and dad doesn't mean you have to do everything. Right. You know, Delegate if you both. are in a financial right. position where you don't have to work every day or, you know, you're fine, then by God, be with your kid every second. You know, we were so lucky that we were able to bring Juju the first two years of his life here. Okay, you know, so, there you, some, so you were bringing him all we were, the time. We were bringing he him was here, here because okay. if not, we would have seen him. Imagine, he's here at 6.30 in the morning, I'm here at 8, and we leave at 8. Right. You know, so we just would bring him here. Obviously, the tall years got a little bit more hectic, and then the pandemic happened, and we haven't brought him since. So we kind of got so the best. So he's he's been born and raised he was here. Raised here. So he, he was, so three, was He's just he was on there. he's just on timeout. He's on timeout. Yeah. Well, he, well, he comes <laughs> like, like, a, like he comes every day with you. Yeah. yeah. He would come every day with us. He so was with us. it's funny yeah. that you mentioned that because it was the best. he was three months old in his little. Uh, he was a really good baby. I had like him under my desk. And Cindy <laughs> would have him. Wow. I would rock him while I was here and doing the work and. People would come by and say, hey, bye, Cindy, and they'd be like... One day, yeah, I grabbed him to fuck him, and they're like, wow, a baby? <laughs> a baby here? Like, it was a really good baby. It was, it was a really good baby. <laughs> but I think it's just like, um, I said that because it was really hard not bringing him here and just feeling like, you know, the mom guilt. You have to let it all go. You're doing what's best for your family. So you do what you need to do to find the best solution or success for your family, and don't care what anyone says. Follow your gut, accept help, because having a kid is very difficult. Um, and be work. present with your child. Yeah, exactly. Like when we're at home, we put our phones away, we're present, like it's just being aware of the situation. So I think just letting, like you're, you're gonna be fine, you know? Yeah. Just be grateful, be but present I think, with your child. I think honestly, delegating at work, which I, yeah. I went to go put an order in with you guys the other day and I saw that you have a great team around you and you guys are delegating. Right? right, so delegate at work and also delegate at home if you can too. Like if you have your mom, her mom, right. and if you have family that wants to help, don't feel bad if you leave the baby. And you, have, you know, like you know, use the team around you. The, that saying that it takes a village to raise a kid right. is, is is said and has been said over time for a reason. You know, for thousands of years. Exactly. <laughs> and, then and then you know, if it's a family, <laughs> if, and also if it's a family business. Yeah. You know, sometimes your family has to be there, right? right. Like, yeah. right. We were a family business. Yeah, and Literally, our son was there, you know? Right. That, it worked for us. It may not work for everybody, yeah. but... Um, when you went wild out, I just took him outside. I mean, it got rough at the end, but you have well, to that, just, like, accept, you know, right. surrender. Like, that's, you can't what, control that's what anything. Stephanie, Stephanie wants to, you know, start bringing him once he gets a little older to the office. The yeah. You know, she wants her own office. You know, yeah. kind of do what you did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I asked you for your advice on that. That was it a worked out for us. And looking back, obviously, you know, pandemics can happen again, but I don't think it will happen so often. I mean, I don't know, but looking back, now that we can't bring him anymore, and seeing that we had almost two years where we could bring him, was probably one of the, great the greatest that we had, things yeah. we could have. That's awesome. And, you know? and he would jump all over the patients while they're trying to exercise, <laughs> and they loved it, though. Yeah. So when, and they would, when they would come, and let's say it was a day where, you know, he wasn't really feeling too hot, he had a a little fever the night before or something and we wouldn't bring them, people would be like, yo, where, where's Juju? Where's he at? Nah, 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 and can I tell you? Call me the I, next time he's not coming. I so. believe that helped with his uh, development as well. Because he was just exposed to adults and talk, talking and I just let him be and I taught him, you know, I just let him, I set boundaries, but I was like, go, just to be a kid, go. And I feel like that helped him develop a lot, I think so. Awesome. Okay. All right, well, I want to thank you for your time. I want to, um, can you tell the people where they can find you and what social medias and stuff like that? You know, give them your your spiel. So basically on Instagram and Facebook, you can find us at park.pt. Um, our website is parkpt.com. Uh, you'll find all our information on there. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to call us. We'll be more than happy to, to talk with you guys. I'm Dr. Alex Gonzalez and my wife Cindy Gonzalez, and we are the owners of Premier Athletic Rehab Center, aka Park. <laughs>